Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. My name is Daniel. My name is Nikhil. We're from the Google Brain team. And today, we're delighted to talk about JavaScript. So Python has been one of the mainstream languages for scientific computing. And it's been like that for a while. And there's a lot of tools and libraries around Python. But it's that where it ends. We're here today to talk that job, to convince you that JavaScript and the browser have a lot to offer. And TensorFlow Playground is a great example of that. I'm curious, how many people have seen TensorFlow Playground before? Oh, wow, quite a few. <laughs> I'm very glad. So for those of you that haven't seen it, you can check it out after our talk at playground.tensorflow.org. It is an in-browser visualization of a small neural network. And it shows in real time all the internals of the network as it's training. And this was a lot of fun to make and had a huge educational success. We've been getting emails from high schools and universities that have been using this to teach students about machine learning. After we launched Playground, we were wondering, why was it so successful? And we think one big reason was because it was in the browser. And the browser is this unique platform where you, the, the things you build, you can share with anyone with just a link. And those people that open your app don't have to install any drivers or any software. It just works. Another thing is it's, the browser is highly interactive. And so the user is going to be engaged with whatever you're building. Another big thing is that browsers, we didn't take advantage of this in the playground, but browsers have access to sensors, like the microphone and the camera and the accelerometer. And all of these sensors are behind standardized APIs that work on all browsers. And the last thing, the most important thing, is the data that comes from these sensors doesn't ever have to leave the client. You don't have to upload anything to the server, which preserves privacy. Now, the playground that we built is powered by a small neural network, 300 lines of vanilla JavaScript, that we wrote as a one-off library. It doesn't scale. It's just simple for loops. And it wasn't engineered to be reusable. But it was clear to us that if we were to open um, the door to, for people to merge machine learning and the browser, we had to build a library. And we did it. We released DeepLearn.js, a JavaScript library that um, is GPU accelerated, and it take, and does that via WebGL, which is a standard in the browser that allows you to render 3D graphics. We utilize it to do linear algebra for us. And DeepLearn.js allows you to both run inference in the browser and training entirely in the browser. When we released it, we had an incredible momentum. The community took DeepLearn.js and took existing models in Python and ported it into the browser and built interactive, fun things with it. So one example is the style transfer. Um, another person ported a character RNN and then built a novel interface that allows you to explore all the different possible endings of a sentence, all generated by the model in real time. Another example is a font generative model. There was a post about this um, that um, the person that built it allowed users to explore the hidden dimensions, the interesting dimensions in the embedding space. And you can see how they uh, relate to boldness and slantedness of the font. And there was even educational examples like Teachable Machine that built this fun little game that uh, taught people how computer vision models work so people could um, interact directly with the webcam. Now, all the examples I showed you uh, point to the incredible momentum we have with DeepLearn.js. And building on that momentum, we're very excited today to announce that DeepLearn.js is joining the TensorFlow family. And with that, we are releasing a new ecosystem of libraries and tools for machine learning with JavaScript called TensorFlow.js. Now, before we get into the details, I want to go over three main use cases of how you can use TensorFlow.js today with the tools and libraries that we're releasing. So one use case is you can write models directly in the browser. And this has huge educational implications. Um, think of the playground that I just showed. 
A second use case is a major use case is you can take a pre existing model, pre trained model in Python, use a script, and you can import it into the browser to do inference. And a related use case is the same model that you take to do inference, you can retrain it potentially with private data that comes from those sensors of the browser in the browser itself. Now, to give you more of a schematic view, we have the browser that utilizes WebGL to do fast linear algebra. On top of it, TensorFlow.js has two sets of APIs, the Ops API, which used to be DeepLearn.js, and we worked hard to align the API with TensorFlow Python. It is powered by an automatic differentiation library uh, that is built analogous to eager mode. And on top of that, we have a high-level API, layers API, that allow you to use best practices and high-level building blocks to write models. What I'm also very excited today to announce is that we're releasing tools that can take an existing Keras model or TensorFlow safe model and port it automatically for, for execution in the browser. Now, to show you an example of our API, uh, we're going to go over a small um, uh, program that tries to learn the coefficients of a quadratic function. So the coefficients we're trying to learn are A, B, and C from data. So we have our import TF from TensorFlow.js. For those of you that don't know, this is a standard um, ES6 import in JavaScript, very common. We have our three tensors, A, B, and C. We mark them as variables. Uh, which means that they are mutable and uh, the optimizer can change them. We have our f of x function that does the polynomial computation. You can see here familiar API like tf at and tf square, like TensorFlow. In addition to that API, we also have a chaining API, which allows you to call these math operations on tensors itself. And this leads to better readable code that is closer to how we write math. Chaining is very popular in, in JavaScript world. So that's the feed forward part of the model. Now, for the training part, we need a loss function. So here is a loss function that is just a mean squared error uh, from between the prediction and the label. We have our optimizer, an SGD, SGD optimizer. And we train the model. We call optimizer.minimize for some number of epochs. And here I want to emphasize, for those of you that uh, have um, uh, used the figure before, or the talk before us, Alex's talk, the API in, in TensorFlow.js is aligned with the eager API in Python. All right, so clearly, that's not how most um, people write machine learning, because, because those uh, low-level linear algebra ops can be uh, quite verbose. And for that, we have our layers API. And to show you an example of that, we're, gonna, we're going to um, built a recurrent neural network that learns to sum two numbers. But the complicated part is that those numbers, like the number 90 plus 10, are being fed character by character. And then the neural network has to maintain an internal state with an LSTM cell that that state then gets passed into a decoder. And then the decoder has to output 100 character by character. So it's a sequence to sequence model. Now, this may sound a little complicated, but with the Layers API, is not that much lines of code. We have our import TF from TensorFlow.js. We have our sequential model, which just means it's a stack of layers. For those of you that are familiar with uh, TF layers in Python or Keras, this API looks very familiar. We have the first two layers are the encoder. The last three layers are the decoder. And that's our model. We then compile it with a loss, an optimizer, and a metric we want to monitor, like accuracy. And we call model.fit with our data. Now, what I want to point out here is the await keyword. So model.fit is an asynchronous call, which means, because in practice, that can take about 30 or 40 seconds in a browser. And in those 30 or 40 seconds, you don't want the main UI thread of the browser to be locked. And this is why you get a callback with a history object after that's done. And in between, the GPU is going to do the work. Now, the code I showed you is when you are trying to write models directly, when you want to write models directly in the browser. But as I said before, a major use case 
even with Deep Learn JS, was people importing models that were pre-trained, and they just want to do inference in the browser. And before we jump into the details of that, I want to show you a fun little game that our friends at Google Brand Studio built that takes advantage of an automatically pre-trained model ported into the browser. And the game is called Emoji Scavenger Hunt. And the way it works, I'm going to show you here a real demo with the phone. It's in the browser. Let me see. Can I see here? So you can see I have a Chrome browser open up on a Pixel phone. You can see the URL on the top. And the game uses the webcam and shows me an emoji. And then I have some time, some number of seconds, to find the real version item of that emoji before the time runs out. So before we play, Nikhil here is going to help me identify the objects that this game asks. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right. All right, watch. watch. You have Did a watch? I, see a I have a watch. Did right. I spot a velvet? Come on. Woo! Hey, you found Yay, watch. we got that. Awesome. Let's see what our next item is. Shoe. Shoe. I think you got to help me out here, buddy. Did I spot a spin? Oh, yeah. Hey, you Woo, found we shoe. got the shoe. All right, what's next? All right, do I want some banana. A banana? Yeah, do you Does have anyone a, have a banana? This guy's got a banana. Oh, what? Come over here, man. This guy's got a banana. Come over here. Am I seeing a wolf? Yay! Nice. All right. All right. Look at us. I'm ready. We're going to yeah, have a high score here. Beer. Could that Beer? Be a hat? It's 10.30 in the morning, Daniel. Did I spot a <laughs> Let's get back to the talk. All right. I think I saw a milk can. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to jump into some of the technical details of how we actually built that game. Come to clicker. So what we did was we trained a model in TensorFlow to be an object recognizer for the scavenger hunt game. We chose about 400 different classes that would be reasonable for a game like this, you know, watches and bananas and, and, and beer. Um, so what we did was we used the TensorFlow for Poets code lab. And in that code lab, what you essentially do is you take a pre-trained mobile net model. And if you don't know what mobile net is, it's a state-of-the-art computer vision model for edge devices. So what we effectively did was we took that model and we retrained it for these classes. Now we have an object detector in the Python world. How do we actually now get this into the browser? Well, we provide a set of tools today that help you actually do that. Once it's in, you skin the game and you, you know, make the computer talk and all that kind of fun stuff. Let's jump into how we actually convert that model. Um, so as Daniel mentioned earlier today, um, we actually support two types of models. So we support TensorFlow saved models. We have a converter for that. And we also have a converter for care saved models. So you define your model and you save it with a saved model. This is a standard way to do that. Similarly, for, similarly this is code that you would do that for Keras. This is unimportant. The next piece is that we actually convert it to the web. Today, we're releasing a pip package. It's TensorFlow.js. You can install that there. Uh, there's a script in there that lets you point to your TensorFlow save model and point to an output directory. And that output directory will be where those static build artifacts will go for the web. Keras is the same exact flow. Point to your HDF5 input, and you have an output directory where those build artifacts will go. Now you statically host those on your website somewhere, you know, just simple static hosting. And on the JavaScript side, we provide an API that lets you load that model. So this is what it looks like for TensorFlow. Um, in the TensorFlow save model, you'll notice that it's a frozen model. We don't right now support continuing training of this model. Well, in the Keras case, we actually let you continue training. And we're working hard to keep these um, APIs aligned in the future. OK, so under the cover, what are we actually doing? Uh, so we're doing some graph optimization, which essentially means that we prune out nodes that you don't need to make the prediction. You don't need that in the web. We optimize weights for browser autocaching. So we pack and shard in chunks of four megabytes, which helps your browser be quick the next time your page loads. Today, we support about 90 of the most commonly used TensorFlow ops. And we're working very hard to support more like control flow ops. And we support 32 of the most commonly used Keras layers today. And as I mentioned, we let you continue training for Keras models. And we let you do evaluation, as well as make predictions from that model. OK, so obviously, there's a lot you can do with just porting your models to the web for inference. But since the beginning of DeepLearn.js, 
we've made it a high priority to make sure that you can train directly in the browser. You know, this opens up the door for education and interactive tools like we saw with the playground, um, as well as lets you train with data that never leaves your client. So this is huge for privacy. So to show off what you can do with something like this, we built another little game. So the goal of the game is to play Pac-Man with your webcam. Now, Daniel is going to be my helper here. He's uh, much, much better at this game than I am for some reason. <laughs> um, so say hi. So there are three phases of the game. Phase one, we're going to collect frames from the webcam, and we're going to associate those with up, down, left, and right, these classes. Now, Daniel is going to do, you know, move his head up, down, left, and right, and he's just simply going to play the game like that. And you'll notice as he's collecting frames, he's kind of moving around a little bit. This kind of helps the model see different angles uh, for that class and generalize a little bit better. So after he's done collecting these frames, we're going to go and train our model. So we're not actually training from scratch here when we hit that train button. We're taking a pre-trained mobile net again, porting that to the web, and doing a retraining phase with that data that's local. And we're using the Layers API to do that in the browser here. Do you want to press that train button? All right, our loss is going down. It looks like we're learning something. That's great. So as soon as we press that play button, what's going to happen is we're going to make predictions from the webcam. Those are going to get plugged into those controls, and it's going to control the Pac-Man Pac game. Ready? All right, so you can see in the bottom right, uh, it's highlighting the class that it thinks it is. And Dan, if, if he moves his head around, you'll see, it, you'll see it change that class. And he's off. So, <laughs> so all of this code is online, and you can go fork it. We invite you to do so. And obviously, this is just a game. Uh, but you can imagine you know, other types of applications of this, like make a browser extension that um, lets you control the page for accessibility purposes. So again, all this code is online. Please go fork it and play and make something else with it. OK, Daniel. I know this is fun. I know this I is gotta, fun. Right? All right. <laughs> got to get back to the talk. OK, so let's talk a little bit about performance. So what we're looking at here is a benchmark of MobileNet 1.0 running with TensorFlow. This is TensorFlow Classic, not with TensorFlow.js. And I want to point out here we're using a batch size of one. This is important because we're thinking about this in the context of an interactive application. So maybe this Pac-Man game where you feed in webcam data, you want to know what the prediction time is for one. You can't really batch things. On the top row, we're looking at TensorFlow CUDA running on a 1080, 1080 GTX. This is a beefy machine. Uh, it's about three milliseconds. And I want to point out, the shorter the bar, the faster it is, clearly. In the second row, we have TensorFlow CPU. And this is running with AVX 512. And this is on, actually, one of these MacBook Pros here. It's about 60 milliseconds for that frame. Where does TensorFlow.js fit into this picture? Well, it depends. If you're running on a beefy 1080 GTX, we're actually getting about 11 milliseconds for, for one pass through this mobile net model which is pretty good if you think about this in the context of an interactive game. Um, so on the laptop that we just showed uh, the game with, we're getting about 100 milliseconds for that inference pass through MobileNet. And that's still pretty good. Like You can build a whole interactive game with something that's running at 100 milliseconds. So the web is only going to get faster and faster. There's a whole new set of standards coming, like WebGPU, that will really push the boundary for these kind of things. But the browser still has its limitations. You, know, you can only really get access to um, the GPU through WebGL and these APIs. So how do we scale beyond that? How do we scale beyond the limitations that we have in the browser? There's a whole ecosystem of server-side JavaScript tools using Node.js that we would love to take advantage of. So today, I'm really happy to tell you that we're working on Node.js bindings to the TensorFlow C API. What that means is you'll be able to write that same low-level ops API with the eager mode we saw with the polynomial example, or the high-level layers API, which we saw for the Pac-Man example, and bind to TensorFlow C and run headless on your, on your, in your TensorFlow running with CUDA installed. Eventually, that also means we can run with a TPU on a back end, that same JS code. So these bindings are under active development, so stay tuned for more. 
All right, so let's recap some of the things that we launched today and that we talked about. Uh, so we talked about this low-level ops API, which does uh, hardware-accelerated uh, linear algebra, as well as the eager mode differentiation for Autograd. Uh, this is previously known as DeepLearn.js. We're rebranding that today. Um, we released the high-level layers API. This is the Keras-inspired API that mirrors TensorFlow the layers, and we saw an example of that with the addition RNN, and we saw an example of that with the Pac-Man demo. Uh, we also showed you how you can import TensorFlow saved models and Keras models for prediction and retraining in the browser. We also have released a bunch of demos and examples on GitHub. These are not the only two. There's a whole repository of different examples that can get you started. Uh, and they all have live links, so you can go and, and poke around and play. So I invite you to go do that. Um, so we really want to see you get involved in this project. Um, we have a bunch of links here. So js.tensorflow.org is our official website. All of these links, everything we talked about is there. There are tutorials, there's documentation, et cetera. Our code is obviously open sourced under TensorFlow SAS TFJS, so I invite you to go play there too. And we also started a community mailing list today. Uh, that's the short link here. And the community mailing list is for people to post demos and ask questions and that kind of thing. Um, so this project was not just Daniel and myself. This was a, a larger team effort between many of our amazing colleagues at Google, so we want to thank them. And we also want to thank all of the amazing open source contributors for DeepLearn.js. And we're really excited to build the next chapter of machine learning and JavaScript with you. Thank you. Thank you.